I saw, and this is what I heard. We, we, we've been, for the last couple of weeks, been talking about the secret place, being in that place where you can hear what other people can't hear. Today we get to look at a text here that's kind of signifies and solidifies it all as we uh, close out. And I, and I feel, you know, this, this is kind of like part one, but, but it's an interesting story. But our text is titled, This is What I Saw, and This is What I Heard. Numbers chapter 22, verses 18 and 19. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I can't. I cannot go beyond the word. I like this. I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now, therefore, I pray you, Terry, right? This time, that I may know what the Lord say unto me more. This is what I saw. This is what I heard. Father, I thank you for this word. I pray, Lord, your blessings upon it. Bless your people. Allow the spirit of the teacher to inundate me that I might be able to clearly communicate what you've impregnated me with. Give us ears to hear, heart to receive, and a mind to react. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please be seated. What an exciting time in Bible, I, I just, you ever read one of those stories in the Bible, you wish you were there? Yeah. This is one, come on, this is interesting. How many of y'all know about this story? Let me see your hand. You know about the story of Balaam and Balak and the donkey that talked? This is that story here. Man, Numbers chapter 22, I mean, this is one of them stories, Keep you would go, oh, come on. But it is true. This is true, and it's the word of God. And the Bible said whatever things were written before time was written for our learning. Man, there is something to learn here, but just in this verse alone where I grab this text, it says, Balaam answers Balak and says, if you would give me your house. Now, Balak is a king. You better believe he's got the best house in the land. Anybody, watch, anybody saw cribs before? I watch them, y'all. I like them pretty houses. There's a couple of folks, man. I mean, if they just give it to me, I'll take it. But if I got to compromise as much as I want it, no. As an electrician, I've worked on some beautiful houses. Go on your internet and look up Arthur Ruckenberg. Look at one of those homes. Beautiful. Immaculate. The details are unbelievable. But if I got to compromise to have one, I don't want one. Because Balaam's commitment is, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God. Now, that's the part that made me grab this text. My God is personal, right? He didn't say our God because Balak served a different God. And according to his own words, he's made himself like a God because of what he want this man to do. If you're not familiar with the story, I would encourage you read Numbers chapter 22 and 23. You'll get a glimpse of this. But allow me to meander and wander around in a little bit. Is that okay? Say the text with me. This is what I saw. This is what I heard. All right. Balak is a king, and, and Israel is meandering through on their destiny. Part of their destiny is to conquer and divide. They are taking, they are being given, that God has given them vineyards they didn't plant, homes they didn't live in, and as they are wandering through on this destiny, people are mocking them for coming toward them. Not only are they wandering through, Balak is, is, is he's kind of concerned because he realizes that it's just a matter of time that these people that are dividing and conquering are coming his way. So what do you do? What do you do? How do you offset it? He comes up with a plan. 
Maybe I can get these people cursed. In Numbers chapter 22, verse 5, he comes up with a plan. And the Bible says in Numbers 22 and, and verse 5, it says he sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor, Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people who have come out of Egypt. These people are on a vengeance. They're marching. Man, I think of that old great time they used to say, we're marching up to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. They were marching through on their way to their destiny. And while on their way, it was intimidating to other people. Not only was it intimidating, these people looked blessed. These people sounded blessed. These people were growing. If you are a Bible scholar and you remember exactly what God told Abraham, they are fulfilling it. They are in the midst of fulfilling prophetic destiny. <sighs> Say it with me, I'm on my way. He said there are some people that have come out of Egypt and they cover the face of the earth. That's another number for saying it's so many of them. They are multiplying. They cover the face of the earth. And they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, and curse me, these people. Curse these people. You know, there's some people don't like you. There's some people that don't like you for what you stand for. There's some people that don't like you for who you are. All they got to see is a Bible on you, and they don't like you. Because they know there's standards that go along with that that contradict their life. He did not want them like them, and now he wants to curse them. He said, curse me these people. Let me read the text. That I shall prevail, and, and that we may swipe, smite them. And I want to drive them out of the land. For I want that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. He said, I heard of you. I, I know you got the power to do this. And what he didn't realize is that he can only speak a blessing in accordance with the will of God. So he wants Balaam to curse God's people. He's willing to give him a big offering. You know what preachers are nowadays with an offering? Say it with me, dangerous. Preachers with an offering now is dangerous. He offers him a big offering and then says, come curse the people. He initially refuses. He wouldn't do it. And when Balak heard that he was denied, he sent a message. He said, how could this guy refuse me? Don't he know who I am and what I got power to do? So he sends a bigger, more better looking package deal. He sends actually somebody more notable, hoping he would listen to them. He gives them a bigger incentive package. You know, in our day, it would be like this. They would make an offer as the gangsters would say, you can't refuse. They would make it look so good that you would want to do it. They would offer you a price that you just would dream of having in your bank account. How many of y'all would like to have a couple of more zeros? Amen. What would you be willing to do to get them zeros? Jesus. There's a lot of things I'm not going to do to get them zeros. There's a lot of things you ain't going to do to get them zeros. You're not going to lower your standard. Amen? Amen? We teach our young ladies value, don't we? We teach men value. And our day now, preachers have lowered their value system so and anything they can do to get an offering, they'll do it. Whatever they got to say, I mean, the internet is full of it. So do this, this seed, this seed, that seed. I ain't never heard of so much seed. Hurry up, get it in the ground. Hurry up. What? When did we get in a hurry? And you know what even bothered me more so? is so many people don't catch, they don't get it. So many people give in to that. And here we are, you know, a little honest Sam here, 
and we're, we're just existing day to day. Now, I know how to do that stuff. I can, I can create a scam and make plenty of money. But I got to stand before the Lord one day. Yes. Yes. I, I, I keep that on my mind. I got to stand before the Lord one day. You may build cathedrals great and strong, but only what you do for Christ will last. I want something that's going to last. He sends him a bigger offering, a bigger bride. And don't you know how much is that preacher in the window? He changes his mind. What, what, what does it take for you to change your mind? Is it a bigger number? What gets you to change your mind? Is it a more handsome man or a more gorgeous girl? People are changing their mind. Let's don't, let's don't even play with it. People are changing their mind. What that man heard was what God had initially said and there was no need to change. He changed his mind and decided to go. And in verse 22 of, of Numbers, uh, God gets mad at him. He gets mad at him. He gets mad at him. And when he gets mad at him, he sends an angel. <laughs> he rose up to go. Well, let me say this before I read this. Uh, uh, he, when, when he sent the second attempted offering, he sent the second attempt. And he decides to pray about it. He prays about it. You read it if you read the text. He prays about it. Now when he go to pray about it, guess what? The angel of the Lord speaks to him. The Lord speaks to him and says, why are you praying? Why are you praying? You already know what I told you. Say it with me. I know what I heard. God already said don't go. You can't go and curse whose God is blessed. Why are you trying to go? All right, go ahead. You know, you can get so persistent sometimes God will give over to your will. Amen. He lets him go. I didn't. I don't want to make this lengthy because uh, of time constraints here. But, but when he lets him go, he said, you can only speak what I tell you. When he goes, God is upset that he has made that choice to do what he wasn't supposed to do. The Bible says, the angel of the Lord got with him. Give me verse 22, Mariah. You might be back of, the back of that. There you go. God's anger was kindled because he went. Folks, you must know God's will and stick with it. Don't change. He went and God got upset. I got to tie my shoe before I break my neck. <laughs> he went. God got upset. And when God got upset, he stood in the way. As an adversary against him. Folks, God will fight for us. God will protect us. And there comes a time God will get in your way to keep you from you. Amen. Thank God he does. God got in the way of this man's plan. What was his plan? He got in the way of this man who was determined to go and do the unthinkable. He was determined to go at the beckoning call of this heathen king who wanted God's people blessed. Anytime you take partnership in something like that, you better believe God's going to get in your way. Because he told them upon this rock, I'll build my church. Turn me down just a little bit. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He told them that my church, my people will be a dignified people. God is always favoring his church. When you go to stand against it, you are standing in the way of God. And God will get in your way. Not only that, thank God he does get in the way. God got in the way of some of us sometimes in bad decisions we're trying to make. Thank God he stands in the way. Because he gets in the way and stops it from happening. Stops you from signing that thing you shouldn't sign or getting involved in that relationship you shouldn't have got involved with. He stops, he blocks the way. Thank God he blocks our way. Thank God he directs.
directs our path. Thank God he guides us that way we ought to go. One writer said his word is a light and a lamp. Why? Immediate and long distance. A lamp is right there immediately, isn't it? But a light shines out. Why? Wow. He said the word is both. A lamp under my feet, and I can see where I'm going right now, and it lights a path. So I can know which way to go. God got in the way of this man. And you know, the Lord was kindled because he went. The angel stood in the way. Now right now, Balaam don't see it. He's steady trying to go. Don't that sound like us? Steady trying to go and do what he want to do. What he don't see is that God is trying to stop him. Am I talking to somebody? But he don't see and realizes that that is not the plan for God. You might have some things planned that are good things. You might want to get involved in some things that are okay. But if it's not in God's will, God is going to get in the way of that thing and not allow you to do that. Thank God he does. He got in the way. He didn't see it though. He was riding. And when the donkey saw what he couldn't see. He saw that angel of the Lord. He saw the angel of the Lord standing. Got a sword in his hand. Ready to kill Balak. Balaam, I mean. The donkey did what a faithful animal would do. I don't know if Bella would do that for me, but uh, Bella is our new dog. Uh, but the donkey, trying to save him, turned aside. Out of the way. That's a message right there. This donkey. Now I heard a well-trained dog. This is a well-trained donkey. <laughs> he turns another way. And he's mad because he's determined to go the way he wants to go. Doesn't that sound like worldly folks? Don't that sound like some of us sometimes? Determined to go the way we want to go. The donkey turned one way. He tried to beat the he goes to beat on the donkey. I'm telling you, this is one of them stories you read in the Bible. I just wish I could have been there. They need to make a movie about this. I would love to see this. Look at this, Mark. He, he, the donkey sees the angel, and then all of a sudden, he sees the sword in his hand. He turns aside trying to save this man's life. The donkey is trying to save his life, Brother Albert. And he gets mad. Stop beating on the donkey. What a joke. <laughs> this, is, this is about one of the most interesting things. Balaam beat that donkey to turn her to the way he want to go. He's bent on going. <laughs> Forgive me, y'all, but when I read this and see, I just think, dear Lord, this is one of those stories. He actually became known for being the man who loved his compromise. Look what Peter said about him. Look what Peter said there in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. The Bible warning about fake preachers now, and he gives this analogy. He brings up Balaam. He said, he, he forsook the right way and going astray, following the way of Balaam, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Is that not the day we live in? They love the wages. I mean, man, some of these folks are the biggest scams. I mean, even Ray Charles can see these folks are scams. And yet, people are falling for them. And I'm not trying to sweat, but I'm telling you, I can start naming names of people. You can go on the internet and look at them and think, dear Lord, God never called us to be flamboyant playboys. Flashy suits, tight suits. When did this other hat come into play? These old tight suits and I remember one time Pastor Wise had a brother put a robe on because <laughs> You remember that key? <laughs> All right, uh, I'm just trying to talk here. I mean, now you can't even go to church because these women, and I love women, I'm married to one. But everybody don't need to see you got. Uh, really? That's all tell you. What is happening? The dresses are so tight. She's showing me something. I'm saying, 
Now, for a brother that's struggling, yeah. he best not go to church nowadays. Right. Let's admit it. There are brothers struggling. Yeah. yeah. And there's some sisters struggling. Yeah. 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 That's why I asked the room. You know, I'm going to get into this. Love the wages of unrighteousness. We have to do better. And it starts, the problem lies in the book. There used to be a time preachers preached in hell standing. And now, you know, we, we put in the mothers, we put them on lockdown. Told them, don't say nothing to her. Let her alone. I mean, splits all the way up there. Hit me, man, dear Lord. I ain't against good dress. Look at me. Look at that. I mean, look at my life. There's some decency and order. Where y'all carry yourselves in such a great manner with, with style. You don't have to be productive, uh, not productive, uh, seductive and. Yeah, yeah. Don't think provocative. Yeah. But they love it now. The wages of unrighteousness shuts us up. Because we're so busy trying to get your money. I always said, even as a young minister, if you took the money out of preaching, I wonder who would still preach. They love the wages of unrighteousness. Sissies giving a hundred dollars. Need to be saved. Won't say nothing because you just gave a hundred dollars. You sold. He became famous for his compromise. Just how determined he was. Look at verse 26 of this text here. The Bible says the angel of the Lord went a little further. Look how determined he is. Mariah, put it up, baby. Uh, the angel of the Lord went a little further. Why? He's steady trying to go the wrong way. This time he boxed him in in this narrow place. The donkey sees it, he don't. Because remember now, the donkey just took a beat. He just beat the donkey. And the donkey went, probably tired of them licks. And the angel get in front of him again. How determined are people are to do some of the things they're doing these days? Even when God has reached out in his love and tried to stop them. This is interesting here. He goes up a little further and gets in his way again. In this journey of life, thank God for those things he blocked and get ahead of us. Thank God he does, y'all. He gets ahead of us and blocks some things. The Bible says here, when there was no way to turn to the right or to the left, he boxed them in. Look what happened. When the angel, when the donkey saw now remember, Balaam don't see it. The donkey falls down. Balaam take a look. And then Balaam was so kindled, he hit the donkey again. Come on, say it with me. Again? again. Yeah, look at somebody else say it. Again? Again. Hit him again. Now I'm telling you, this is one of those stories I would have loved to been there. Because now God's going to do the unthinkable. He's going to open up the donkey mouth so that he can speak. He's, you got to admit that this is, this, is, this is amazing. He opens up the donkey's mouth. Balaam is so mad, he's going to get, he's going to beat this donkey. Now I'm going to get you. Verse 31, the Bible says, now he understands. Look at verse 31. The Lord opened his eyes. This secret was contained. He did not catch the sign that God was trying to persuade him not to do. Now God opens his eyes to see that he was really not in problem with the donkey. Look at somebody tell me, the donkey ain't your problem. The donkey ain't your problem. God is. God is. Yeah. There's more things I can say here, but I'm going to leave that there. But I'm going to pick another part of this later, okay? So this is part one. Somebody said, well, don't say that, it's okay. When he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, again, thank God he gets in the way. 
Now he sees what he couldn't see. It floors him. Now, I think there's a part of sincerity here because he's already on the way. Think of this now. He's been offered bigger bribe. He's going. God tries to stop him. Sways the animal. Now the animal puts him in a position, well, God puts him in a position, opens his eyes, and now he's floored. I believe, because I've read so many commentaries that say he was a false preacher and all that, I believe this commitment to the Lord, you can see it there because he says, my God, and then he's going to give the commitment, I can only say what he tells me to say. So even though I've come, the only message you're going to get, watch this man, it's going to come back to you. Bless us. Is what God gave me. Now he's humble because he really realized God was in this thing trying to stop him. So he goes to the floor. That's genuine, y'all. I believe, and I've never heard a preacher or any pastor really give him some, some credit for this. This man humbles himself after he realized all the while what's been going on and who's behind the scenes trying to prevent him from doing the unthinkable. He hits the floor. He humbles. He humbles himself. He's on his face. Well, as the text says, when the Lord opened his eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. And his sword drawn in his hand. He bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And most of our artistry, we see angels riding with a sword and a shield in their cheek. When it's drawn, that means they're about to do something with it. They don't just draw it out for nothing. So what happens here? You see this angel of the Lord, and, and he's, he's floored, and, 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 and he, he's determined in verse 34, a determined prophet gets to go ahead. Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, he said, I've sinned. I've sinned. I, I, I didn't know you were standing in the way. I didn't know all of this time that I was going in a way. I, I know I got caught up, you know, but I didn't realize you were that paying attention to what I was doing. I didn't know you were that interested in where I was going and what I was about to do. I didn't know. He repented. I love this. He said, Lord, I sinned. I didn't know that was you. I didn't know what I was doing was that wrong. And how many times have we in genuine efforts been doing something that's wrong only for God to show us that it was wrong and we never want to do it again? We get to the place where we say, Lord, I didn't know. I didn't know that was you. I didn't know you wanted me to be over here. I was fighting trying to help make this happen and you wanted to get me over there. And I didn't know you had to shut the door here just to open the door. Over there. I didn't know. I didn't know that this season was closing. And while I was still trying to hold on to this season, you were trying to take me, hallelujah, to another season. I didn't know what I was trying to do was no longer in your plan. I didn't know. I thought I had to fight to keep this. And you want to take me over there. I didn't know. Seasons change. And when seasons change, you better go with the flow. Balaam repents. He says, look, Lord, I just did not know. I, I thought I knew, you know. Sometimes, you know, we really think we can hear God, you know. You know how we are with our antennas, you know, all spiritual. We really think we can hear when really we don't know. But oh, when he opened our eyes, good God Almighty, when he opened my eyes, you don't mind letting go. You don't mind going where you say go. When he opened my eyes, he can say, hit the road. Don't you come to the When he opened your eyes, and you can finally see for what it is, you get to that place where you say, Lord, I only want to do what you say do. He gives, I like this one. Let me show you. He says, look, I didn't know. And if you want me to go back, I'll go back. If you want me to go back, I'll go back. I promise you, I'm, I'm not fighting you no more. This donkey wasn't my problem. It was you. If you want me to go back, I'll go back. Yeah. That's what God will do when he gets through working on his woman. 
Say, Lord, wherever you want me to be, that's where I want to be. If you want me to go back, if you keep want me to go forward from this place where I stand right now, the only thing I want to do now is be in the will of God. I don't need no notary. I don't need a preaching engagement. I don't need my name plastered on a wall. The least worry I got is me. I just want to do the will of God, and I want to help somebody make it in. That's all I want, and that should be your prayer, Lord. Sinners need to hear the gospel. Go to an unfamiliar territory. You don't know how this ministry to me was. And God just began to give it to me while I was driving that bus, man. Thinking and meditating on the word of God. God began to put this quote to my spirit. He said, you go. You go to where those men are. Because they need to hear the gospel. You go. But here's the thing. You can only say what I tell you to say. Go with them, but only the word I speak. That shall you speak. So, man, ain't no fighting now. Ain't beating no donkey. I like it this. Look at that last part. So, bail with me. Come on, I wish that would be all our testimony. So, Tawanda's a win. So, sister, put your name in it. Went. Yeah. No ask, no question about it. Went. Just went. Lord, if you want me to go, so Kalani went. Just go. Just do his will. Yeah. Because where God leads, he provides. Yes, he does. When he closes the door, he opens another. And if you don't open the door, stay where you're at and obey. And praise him. And worship him. I don't care where it be at. He went. Not only did he win, he went with the commitment to say whatever God tells him to say. Now look, we got many uncalled people today. They ain't been called. And here's the sad thing, they just say what they want to say. They have no commitment to say what God has told them to say. What God has said in his word. Because if you ain't called, you up doing something God ain't called you to do. But if you win on your own, your commitment should be to what he has said. But because you have your own agenda, we leave that. Some of them don't even go to the Bible preach no more because that's not the agenda. Because they ain't been called. If you've been called, he told you what? Preach the word in season. Come on. Quit the rebuke. Quit the one to get God's will out. He goes. And when he goes, only word he can give. Verse 38. Verse 38, the Bible says, Balaam gets to Balak and says, Look, Balak says, Come now. I got power. Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? Stop right there before we go to the next part. Preachers, you ain't supposed to be just saying anything. God never gave you permission to say just anything. You notice a lot of them cussing now in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. They cussing now big time. I mean, they cussing like a sailor. Trying to go on the internet. I'll send you a couple of them. I'll share them with you. They cussing big time now. Yeah. Cussing people out. Calling people out. One lady up in New York, I guess some lady told her husband that the Lord told her that was going to be her husband. Oh, my Lord, she went hood. Yeah, she did. It's on the internet. Yeah, she did. She said, uh-uh, don't make the projects come out with you from New York. You know, the girls out the project, they vicious. They'll cut you. They are. Woo! Jesus, help me, man. They vicious, y'all. He said, look, I can't just say anything. You can't just say anything. You have to say what he said. This is what you say. This is what you give them. You got to talk to your daughter, you give her this. You don't say just anything. You talk to your husband, your child, whoever it is, give them this. You don't say just anything because you know that anything is the wrong thing. And many a time when we open our mouth without consulting him, 
That's exactly what we say, anything. That's why we got all these little loose people now, starting churches, running around, just saying anything now. Anything goes. He said, look, the word that God put in my mouth, that's what I speak. Say my text with me. This is what I saw. This is what I heard. I saw a donkey fighting me. I saw the angel of the Lord permitting me. You can offer me all you want. If you offer me your house filled with all the gold and silver of the land, I'm only going to say what God wants me to say. Let me get out of here. I didn't even know I'd be this long. He says, it's only the word that God has given me that I'm going to speak. My commitment is to give you the unadulterated word of God because I know in the word of God, I got a hiding place. In the word of God, I got safety, y'all. In the word of God is the safest place I can ever want to be. So we have many that are called, but that doesn't give them the permission to say whatever they want to say. And now we're just making up stuff. But God wants somebody, like verse 38, that will say, I'm only going to speak what the word of God says. Let the chips fall where they may. They might not vote me in as the pastor, but that's all right. They might not want to put my name on Charisma Magazine. That's all right. I only want to be in the room of God. I only want to do what God said. And when you grow up in your life and you get enough of horror stories and you go through enough hell, you realize the only thing that matters is what God says. It's what God wants. And if you say, go over there, I have to go over there. If you say, go over here, I have to go over here. Yeah. 
know, at whatever place God gets you wrong at, don't try to do it. Just to repent. At whatever place it is, repent. Because the goodness of God leads us to repentance. Yes. Thank God in his goodness, he got in his way. Because when he found out, he did what you and I should do now at the altar. And that's repent. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm willing from this point. I can't change destiny. But I know who holds destiny. So I have to do now, right now, now faith. Now. Now faith. I take the step right now. And if you're here, you have to pray that. Let's pray together. Let's pray together and let's take that step right now. Right now. From now on, resolve in your mind. Resolve in your heart. It's what he says now. Father, we thank you. Oh, how we praise you. For you and you alone are worthy. You have made a way. You have provided. And Lord, we have found ourselves to be wanting. And we stand at the altar, the place of hope. And ask that you would forgive us. Lord, I'm sorry. There are those here that would say, Lord, I have sinned. And come short. Forgive me. Mold me. Shape me. Help me. Whatever this next chapter holds, Father, allow me from this point to walk out. Hear your voice. Maybe I didn't know, I didn't see like Balaam that all this path I was fighting and I was going the wrong way. But I thank you that through your mercy you've given us the ability to see the error of our way. That we might change our way. I hear the Lord saying, don't mess it up. Mercy and grace is extended. Thank you. Bless us. And we'll give you praise. In Jesus' name. Don't know how, but you did it. Made a way.